Denika Lohr, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Our next guest is no stranger to this show. I'm very pleased to welcome Marion Matella. Now, Marion has published books for children and adults. She's passionate about the arts and creativity, and you can find her here on Shaw on her own show, You Rock. Marion, welcome back to Lit Happens. Well, thank you, and you rock for having me on <laughs> your show. So it's great to be here. So today we're talking about a couple more of your children's books. Mm -hmm. And so the most recent is Kukum's Babushka. Mm -hmm. Kukum's Babushka. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the newest title. Well, that's the fourth book in my trilogy, which is called the Tetralogy. I had to look that up. And the inspiration for that book was very interesting. I was at Word on the Street, street and this indigenous man came up to me, Kelly O'Canny, and he says to me, Babushka, Papushka, that's a Cree word. And I said, well, isn't that interesting? Because the actual word for Babushka in the Ukrainian language is Fuska or Kuska. And so I thought, well, that inspired me to, to think about uh, the word Babushka. And I have this beautiful yellow babushka because all my books have beautiful babushkas. And one thing I noticed is all the kukums wear babushkas. And I wondered why. So I thought, well, there must be a story in that. So in my fourth book, uh, with my first book, my grandparents uh, are from Ukraine and they get um, come to Canada in the fourth book and they meet the indigenous people and we know that the indigenous people have helped them a lot uh, to survive. And so they meet them and spend three days with them and we find out what they have in common. And Taras, the little boy in the story, keeps saying different but good because between the indigenous people and the Ukrainian people, they have beadwork, they have the belts, they have the fiddle, you know, and so they have a lot of things in common. So that's where that story came from. And it was published by Gabriel DeMont and it just came out. So it's doing very well so far. And, and so your other three books were published by your, your Nicholsworth yes. Publishing. Yes, yes. And so this with the, the Gabriel DeMont Institute Press mm -hmm. is, a, is a new partnership for you. It's a new partnership and I had an Indigenous uh, artist too, Donna Lee DeMont, did the illustrations and did a beautiful job. And if you look at the cover, you'll see there's a meeting of the two cultures. So there's the Ukrainian embroidery, but there's also the Métis, the beadwork uh, on the front. And so she did a beautiful job and the meeting of both uh, cultures and it was so fun to do and Donna Lee DeMond is just a lovely person and Karen Schmann through Gabriel DeMond I thank them because uh, it's just wonderful to be working with them. Now would you like to read a, sure. a, a little tiny bit of this? Sure. Natalia is the girl in our story so she continues her story in this book too. Natalia was playing in the lovely sunshine. It was summertime and it had been a long hard spring. She could see her mother watching her from the window of her farmhouse near Halford, Saskatchewan. She turned and waved at her mama. Her mama smiled and waved back. Natalia could see her bate's bright blue, twinkling eyes. They were just like her grandmother's, her baba's. Yoy, how she missed her baba. It was the first summer without her, and a tear rolled down her cheek. As she looked up at the sky in the cloud, she could see her baba wearing her babushka, watching from heaven. That pretty headscarf, always frame Baba's lovely face. She felt comforted knowing Baba was close by. It was pleasant to lay in the hot sunshine and soak up the sun rays. She started to hum her favorite traditional Tarash Shevchenko song about the sun shining and the wind blowing from the field to the valley. Lying there, Natalia was thinking about her carved wooden chest full of her Baba's beautiful babushkas. Her grandfather, Ordido, had originally made the wooden box for her, for her Baba. Last Christmas, Dito gave her the decorated box as Baba was now in heaven. The treasured box contained three babushkas. The winter snowflakes brought the blue babushka for Christmas. The petals of spring flowers brought the green one at Easter. And the autumn falling leaves brought the bright red scarf. Duja Dobra. They were so colorful. And this is the fourth book then. And all my books have uh, matching babushka. So this is the beautiful yellow babushka that goes with this book. And I'll just put it on because in all my stories, Natalia is out playing outside and a babushka lands on her head, swoops her up and takes her somewhere. And in this part, it takes her to Saskatchewan uh, near Saskatoon uh, and where the Métis round people were living. And, and that is on the way to Dakota Dunes. And I had another friend that uh, showed me where that uh, spot was too. So 
you meet so many interesting people when you write books. <laughs> and, and so the one that came out just a little earlier was More Baba's Please. Mm -hmm. And so this has a, an, another interesting story and a little bit of background as it to, does. to what you um, did here. I don't know if you've ever been to the Ukrainian uh, bake sales or the bazaars, but when you go there, you'll see there's all the babas and all the beautiful baking, the kolach and the breads that they're making. And the inspiration was behind that story was, I was wondering who's gonna do this when all the babas are gone? And so this book is written to honor all women and especially grandmothers around the world. And if you look at the cover, you'll see it's all different ethnic groups in this book. And in the, Kate Hodson made us a wordle. And this wordle celebrates the Kukums, the Nanas, the Omas, all the different ways. There's more than a hundred different ways of saying grandmother in the world. <laughs> And I gave a donation with this book to Grandmothers for Grandmothers, the Stephen Lewis Foundation. So it's done very, very well for me. And at the back, it has my mom's borscht recipe, Baba Sophie's borscht. So you get a little recipe out of it too. <laughs> All the connections to grandmothers. Yes. And, and, and so did you have a, a strong relationship with your grandmother? Well, my, actually my grandmother died when I was four. So I didn't know her. And my grandfather died before I was born. But their picture was on our wall, and I always wondered what their life was like. Coming from Ukraine in 1911, and my mom had the pictures of them on the wall, and my grandmother had a babushka on. Uh, and I thought, hey, there's the inspiration for the story, a babushka, so that made the connection. So that's why I wrote this book, to honor all women, especially grandmothers. We don't recognize how important the women's role is in the house, or in the home, or in our family, in our social settings. And so this is to honor all women and grandmothers. And I could read you a little bit of this sure, one too. that would be fantastic. Big ones, small ones, fat ones, tall, curly-haired, straight-haired, wig-wearing, bald, a rainbow of colors and shapes and size, fun and kind and loving and wise. More babas, please. Mm, lovely. Yeah. And, and who's the artist who, who did this one? Yes, and this I had a different artist for this, Ola Tachenko. And luckily, when I was, she was living in Saskatoon and she gave me her card and then she moved to Toronto. And then I needed an artist for this book. And so she did this one. Uh, she's a Ukrainian artist. And she also is going to be doing another one I'm doing called More Ditos too with grandfathers recognizing all grandfathers and I'm hoping that'll come out in June in time for Father's Day and recognizing them. And again, uh, beautiful illustrations again with the babushkas on, but um, also more importantly as you go, we have what? Making progies, put a ha, vereniki, pinching progies. So that's a favorite thing to do. And we did that in our family a lot, <laughs> for sure. And it's kind of a good social thing to do, for sure. Well, and I think that that's, that's a lovely connection. We don't, we don't always have those connections through the generations, but if we have those special memories, and food memories mm -hmm. are so big in, are. In, in making connections and helping us to, mm -hmm. to keep connected to the people who are close to us and the people that are, that are in, our, in our families and even in, in friendships when families are not so close. Mm -hmm. Food is a very vital part of life, isn't it? And you can create a lot of social activities and fun around that too, for sure. And so you mentioned Grandmothers to Grandmothers. What, does, what is that organization? So it's a Stephen Lewis Foundation. Uh, Stephen Lewis was in Africa, and he noticed that a lot of the grandmothers were raising the grandchildren that were the result of the pa AIDS pandemic that was happening in the wars. And so uh, he went working with them and, and started a foundation to raise money for them. And in 10 years, the Canadian grandmothers heard about this and in 10 years, they raised $25 million to help the grandmothers in Africa. And so when I heard about this organization, it was their 10th anniversary they had started. I thought, I'm for sure going to use the, some of the sales and the profits from my sales to give to that organization. So it's a wonderful organization. They have a banquet uh, in Saskatoon. Anyone can join. You don't have to be a grandmother. And they do fundraising. And they can do any kind of project. They have a big fabric sale in the fall that they sell fabric, but they use all that money to help uh, women around the world and especially grandmothers in Africa who are raising their grandchildren. So. Well, Marion, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> I'm so glad you came back to talk more about grandmothers and how important they are to all of us. And, well, thank you again. And it's a wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. I'm Danica Lohr, and this is Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by going to Shaw TV Saskatoon on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter. You can get a hold of me by going to danicalohr at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.